Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to manipulate the Hammond B3 organ inside of GarageBand in a manner that gives you the most realistic sounding performance out of the Hammond organ here. Uh, it is an excellent sounding software instrument and it has some automation features which I doubt you guys know about, um, which are really amazing that GarageBand allows you to do this. So there's ways to do it, but we should talk about four important things that you should know uh, about how a Hammond organ player really plays the Hammond, okay? Um, so, number one is the fact that the Hammond organ sound has no attack or decay, right? So if you touch the keys, there's a sound, but it does not decay at all before you release your hand, right? So just remember that between the chords, you need to be clean and you need to be fast. If you're not fast enough on the keyboards and you have to leave a little bit of space, when you go and edit those spaces out, just remember not to put everything exactly on the line because no human plays like that, right? And it just sounds really weird, especially if you have the percussion on normal. Um, it just sounds weird. It just sounds like king. It just, it's just very fake sounding. So um, I always go in and sort of add some indiscrepancies, you know, just some inaccuracies, <laughs> right? Maybe let's say that. I add some inaccuracy to that um, beginning of that chord so it doesn't sound like all the fingers came down at the same exact moment. That's number one. Number two is the Leslie speaker, which is actually a physically spinning speaker, um, but uh, Hammond organ players use that sound to help uh, lift it, you know, into a chorus or something, you'll hear the Leslie start spinning up and it gives it a whole new emotion to the sound. So turning that on and off throughout a performance is really key, but very difficult if you don't have a switch or something to do it, but you can do with automation very easily. Third thing are the draw bars, which are these guys right here. If you don't know what they do, play it play with it by yourself, but I can tell you that they do bring in and take out higher or lower elements harmonics of the chord or the note that you are playing. Um, so it just sort of brightens up the sound with higher elements of the harmonics or not, right? Um, then the fourth thing is the volume pedal, which is totally difficult to do if you don't have a volume pedal or if you're playing with two hands on your keyboard to sit there and manipulate the volume on your MIDI controller while you're playing is also very difficult. However, every single one of those things that I talked about, except for the playing, those last three things that I talked about uh, are automatable, right? Automable. How do you say that? Automatable? <laughs> anyway, uh, you can automate all of those things with some really, really easy techniques. And I'm just going to show you how to do that right now. Here we get to the good stuff. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is what well i'm going to play this song that i just recorded this morning uh for this video nothing in particular here's the hammond organ part just to hear it right no volume swells no changes of any kind it's just i just played it right so i'm going to do two things here i'm going to manipulate the draw bars and i'm going to manipulate the speed of the leslie all i have to do to do this is hit record on top of this same exact channel okay so i'm going to select this channel and i'm going to hit record watch It's that easy. I just played the part just how I wanted it to be as I pushed record. Now it has saved all of those moves, you guys. It is totally awesome. Check this out. I'm just going to hit play and watch the controls down here. I'm not going to do anything. They are automated now.
I don't know about you, but I think that is totally awesome that they allow you to do this in GarageBand. So you saw them all moving and turning on and off. So that's totally cool. I'll also add that you can do this to any of the software instruments on GarageBand. Any keyboard that has parameters to be changed, you can use this trick. Record your part, finish it, save it, then hit record again on the same channel and it will start recording the automation for you. Now, the last thing um, that you can do is uh, you can add the volume later on your keyboard. Okay, now I'm going to pick up my little keyboard here and with the volume control on it, I am going to manipulate the volume. And I'm going to do the same exact thing that I just did. I'm going to hit record and I'm just going to sit here and manually with my thumb swell and decay the, the sound. So let's just do it. Let's talk about it later. Here we go. Record. Oh shoot. I hit a key. <laughs> I love doing it. It's such a fun thing to do. Now you can also sit here and see over this field all of that automation that I added in. Unfortunately, you can't do this on a like an, a regular like a recording of a voice or a guitar or something because how sweet would it be to be able to do this? Uh, one of the days, one of these days, I'm sure that they're going to allow us to do this. But for now, on a software instrument, you can do it, and it's totally sweet. Um, so now we'll just go through, and all of that automation will be there. Right? So that's it, you guys. Those are the uh, that those are the tips. Okay, so record it, get it nice and clean between the chords, then go back, hit record over that same software instrument, and change the parameters as you want them to be changed throughout the performance. Um, but by doing this, you're going to give your Hammond organs or whatever piano or keyboard sound you're using a whole new life and a whole new you know, sound of professionalism because of the fact that you can automate these things now. You don't really need to have the whole rig, you know, anymore. You can do it. It's a little bit more uh, time consuming to do it this way, but it's the only way you can do it if you have a basic keyboard like I do here. Um, so anyway, if you have any questions, comments, anything, please leave it in the section below, in the comment section below. Find me on Facebook. Find my Patreon page because I really do need help on my Patreon page. That is the thing that helps my channel continue on, um, you know, AdSense is totally a joke. If you follow YouTubers, we talk about it a bunch, how there's really no money being made with ads. Um, so Patreon is the way that we use for you guys, you know, who appreciate and like what I do. Um, that's how you can support the channel. So please find my Patreon page because that would mean a great deal to me. Uh, so patreon.com forward slash garage band and beyond. Anyway, you guys have a great day. Questions, Facebook here. Talk to you soon. Later. Peace.